whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. in many ordinary activities. Apprehending criminals is not ordinary and is occasionally given increased urgency by the nature of the crime involved. On the morning of October 3rd, Herb Williams, a sneak thief, stole an expensive radioactive oil indicator. The highway patrol swung into action to save Williams and any innocent victims from the danger of exposure to the radioactive mechanism. Car 3760 to headquarters. I picked him up. He's going north on 126, about four miles north of Graniteville. He's doing 90. Twenty-one fifty to all units. The sedan has been spotted going north on 126 out of Graniteville. Two one six nine three seven six zero. Head south out of Brenton Road and cut him off. Now, when you contact the sedan, use caution. The stolen instrument is radioactive. Allow nobody to touch it or disassemble it until I arrive. Mr. Hoyt, which is the business end we have to worry about? Uh, the tube, Mr. Matthews, here. Uh, these are beryllium pellets inside. They be made radioactive by the atomic energy at Oak Ridge. Exposure to the pellets for only a few moments can be fatal. The casings are lead, right? Yes. And it can be opened here, but it can be opened here. Once this thread screw is loosened, the tube can be unscrewed. This tap-out plug is only tin foil. You see, Mr. Matthews, when we lower an indicator into a new Mr. well... Mr. Hoyt, would you come along with us? I'd like an expert to dismantle this thing if we find it. I'd be glad to. All right, fine, let's go. That's what they are, wailing banshees. face the car. Now turn around. The oil indicator in there? No. Where is it? I got rid of it. Where'd you get rid of it? At a junk pile, back down the road. Bring him with us. Are you buying the drinks today, Mrs. Wright? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Adams. Drinks are on the house. <laughs> Got anything in that grab bag I could cheat you out of today? You can't cheat an honest man. <laughs> I can't even find one. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Mrs. Wright, do you happen to have a screwdriver handy? Oh, sure thing. Work table's around the side. Thanks. I'll buy the drinks next time. <laughs>
Oh, Mr. Adams. Ma'am? There's a truck going in towards town. Are you headed for the junkyard? Okay. Did you fix what you wanted to with the screwdriver? No, I'll get to it at the next junkyard. Thanks for everything, and thanks for the lift. here when you tossed it out. No. Excuse me. Mr. Adams was here. Oh, uh, hi, Mrs. Wright. I run the grocery store over there. I got uh, curious. Tell me, Mrs. Wright, who is Mr. Adams? Well, he calls himself a wandering industrialist. What do you call him? <laughs> Just a rag picker. He looks for junk, actually. I mean, he picks over the junk piles and sells it for second hand and scrap. That's right. Mrs. Wright, did he mention finding an oil at a metal gadget that was square on top? With a long pipe coming out of the bottom? Yeah, did he have it with him? Yes, he, he was trying to do something with a, with a screwdriver. Open it, I think. Did he open it? No, he got the ride into town then. Whereabouts in town? Well, I'm not sure, but uh, he said something about going to the junkyards. Which junkyard, do you know? Well, um, uh, he usually goes to the ones on Hughes Boulevard on the way in. He says he gets the best deals there. Take him in and book him. Thank you, Mrs. Wright. Hughes Boulevard, let's roll. I'm selling, not buying. Well, I still might be able to help you. Uh, better than the yards down on Hughes Boulevard. I usually trade down there. Yeah, what happened? You run him out of business? No. My ride only took me halfway to Hughes... <laughs> <laughs> See, do you happen to have a screwdriver handy? Help yourself. Thanks. Adams was at a junkyard, but not on Hughes Boulevard. While the patrol was speeding to that area, Mr. Adams continued to tinker with a potentially fatal oil indicator. None of those screwdrivers fit. I got a whole set inside. Hey, what is that? Oh, it's, uh, well, sort of a Geiger counter. It's complete with batteries. In the tube there, I think. It's practically new. Yeah? Where'd you get it? Oh, junk pile over near Brenton. It's pretty valuable, all right. It comes apart if you take out that screw in the side. It's okay with me if you want to open it up. Eh, uh, 
Why bother? You probably want too much anyhow. Two dollars? What can I have? Sold. Hello? Palliger's junkyard? Who? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Hey, uh, hold the line a minute, will you? There you are. Thanks. Goodbye. So long. Drop in again. I sure will. Hello. Let's see, where were we? Oh, yeah, yeah, the pulleys. Yeah, like you said, I held up three number sevens, three number nines, and two nine A's. You can pick them up any time you want. The price? Uh, like we discussed to the penny. Right. Two o'clock? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be here. Goodbye. Yeah, how's Mr. Marconi today? Looking for bargains as usual. Is that all you can find? Oh, but it's all I dare take home. Hey, the missus doesn't go much for you being a ham radio operator, huh? Not when it gets too expensive. Eh, they're unreasonable. Hey, tell me. Do you still talk to that guy down in Austria by shortwave like you told me? Yes, it's Australia, not Austria. Hey, what is this? Well, that, well, it's uh, uh, sort of a Geiger counter. Says who? Some guy picked it up in a junk pile. <laughs> he should know. Can't tell whether it's fish or fowl. Have you had it apart? No, I just got it. Tell me, can you use it in your radio stuff? Well, maybe a few parts. Just wonder what it is. How much you want for it? For you, my friend? Five dollars. Well, my wife would cut my head off. Hey, does she have to know? You know any way of keeping it from her? Yeah, you win. Four dollars? Three. Oh, impossible. Three and a half. Three and a quarter for science. Well? Sold for three and a quarter. Sure you're a lucky day, mister. No, sir, I haven't seen Mr. Adams for a whole week now. Of course, he doesn't... No, speaking of the devil. Are oh, you Mr. Adams? I suspect so. Excuse me. Hey, come here. Did you find an oil indicator, that is to say, a gadget with dials on it, on Brenton Road today? This is a very dangerous machine. Now, is it in there in the sack? No, sir, I just sold it. Where and to who? To a fellow in a junk shop. What junk shop? This is very important. What's the address? I don't know. But it's down on Fulton, just below Murdoch. Will you take us there? Sure. Right, thanks. Thanks very much. Who the fellow is or where he lives? Like I said, he lives in the city. He's married. He's a ham radio operator. Period. That's absolutely all I know. And you've got no record of the purchases? No. Excuse me, Mr. Matthews. May I make a suggestion about finding this amateur radio operator? What have you got in mind? Couldn't we trace him through the government licenses, which are issued to all amateur radio stations? You mean I should call the FCC and check off the list one by one? No, that would take too long. I'm sure there are at least 500 within a radius of 50 miles. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There used to be an organization that made evening broadcasts to all ham radio operators. It's just before the war. It had something to do with civil defense. Let me have that. 2150 to headquarters. Go ahead, 2150. 2150. Is there an organization that makes daily broadcasts to all amateur radio operators? Sure, the American Radio Relay League. They're on every night at 6.30. Sort of a swap shop, a general information pool. Get me the address of that broadcasting station. Call me back. 10-4? Thanks very much for your help, gentlemen. You hear from me. Gee, 
I wish I'd never picked that thing of a jig up. I wish I'd have held out for five bucks. And they'd have that thing instead of that guy that's always talking to uh, Austria. I'm in here, Mel. Uh, an appropriate place, woman. Hi, sweetie. I'm starved. Oh, and I love you. Thank you. The lovely. And uh, what do you have behind your back? Uh, what back? Come on, confess now. You'll get your dinner no matter what it is. You promise? Cross my heart. What bargain was it impossible to resist this time? It's a beaut. I give up. What is it? Uh, well, I don't know. That's why it's a beaut. Mm -hmm. More scientific research? Well, how am I ever going to find out anything if I don't ask questions? You go on and wash up. Dinner's almost ready. Okay. Mel? Mm -hmm. Are you ever going to bring flowers home without a slightly ulterior motive? Hidden behind your back? Oh, no. At least, not until the baby's born. Shock's bad for you. Oh, get out of here. Yes, ma'am. Of course, I know a lot of the amateur operators, but the only lead you have on this fellow is that he talks to Australia. That doesn't identify him for me. No telling how many of them do that day in and day out. Yeah, we know all that. That's the way a case breaks sometimes. A friend's got a friend who calls Australia, our case is solved. But not this one. I hope our friend is listening tonight instead of sending. One thing I do know, the commercial radio and the newspapers are cooperating. Mr. Hoyt, how can they let an instrument like this lie around? But they don't just let it lie around, Mr. Matthews. It's handled by technicians who have knowledge of its use and its dangers. By of itself, it's as safe as a gun on safety. But in the hands of a person who is ignorant of its uh, radioactive component, it can be disastrous. Some better work. Come on. This is amateur station QTQRT2 of the American Radio Relay League coming on the air for intermittent evening broadcasting by authority of the Federal Communications Commission. Good evening, friends. This is Eric Pride speaking. Before we begin tonight's regular broadcast, we have a special statement on behalf of the Highway Patrol. 
Well, I want control has asked us to announce... What is it, honey? What happened? I don't know. I just got dizzy. Look what I did. Oh, who cares? What's, what's the matter, Ann? Oh, nothing now. I'll be all right. Not if you so much as move your little finger, you won't. Now, come on and sit down. No, no, I, I'm all right now. Yes, yes, you're not all right now. Now, come on. Come in the other room, we'll listen to the broadcast, and, and then I'll do the dishes. <laughs> Who's sick now? now? Don't be sassy. Just do as you're told. We repeat, the contents of the tube, the pellets, are radioactive. Exposure to them for more than five seconds can be deadly. You better now? If you're the one the police 10, is searching for, contact this station. I don't know what happened to me. Armin oh, it's simple. Shock. Immediately. I'll just have to stop bringing you flowers. Oh, from Washington, <laughs> crazy. Procedure for next year's FCC what did you say this thing was? Oh, just another guess what. The Communications Commission has announced that FCC Bulletin 12-7. Are you sure you're all right, Ryan? No, fourth is still in effect. Positive. So Would you like a nice, nice, tall, cool system. glass of water? Fender. Go ahead. You'll feel better if I do. Can I play? Oh, be my guest. While the closing date, which was formerly November 15th, has now been set back to November 1st. Therefore, in total, the period for license renewal application has been shortened one month. All other qualifications remain unchanged. The FCC has also requested that all applicants be certain to fill out the application form in triplicate and that the applicants sign each form. Failure to do so will result in a delay in the issuance of the license. Ladies and gentlemen, before continuing on with the news, I want to repeat an announcement which could mean life or death to one of our members. The Highway Patrol has asked us to announce that a radioactive device, an oil indicator, is known to have been purchased at a junkyard today by an amateur radio operator. This device... Get out of here, Ann. Get out! It contains radioactive pellets. Mel, what are you doing? That gadget I bought is radioactive. They just announced it. What? Those, those pellets. They're radioactive. You could have been killed. Oh, Mel. Mel. I'll call the highway patrol. Matthews here. Have you found it? All right, fine. Have they disassembled it? They have. Tell them to keep away from the pellets. Tell them to keep away from the pellets. They're radioactive. Now, where do they live? Yeah, I know where it is. Second house from the corner? Fine, we'll be right over. Let's go. Everything's fine. Thanks very much for your help, Mr. Bradley. How long were we exposed? Uh, a second, two at the most. It couldn't have harmed you. The pellets are handled that long every day. I'll handle the pellets that long myself, picking them up. May I? Oh, with pleasure. Close call. Huh? Thanks, Thanks to, to you. you. Good day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Matthews. And thanks. See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, it isn't what you drive, but how you drive that counts. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.